It's umsum time. What if tennis disappeared? Oh no! I'm great at tennis. Oh umsum. To buy this T-shirt, visit umsum.com. Firstly, if tennis disappeared, famous tennis stars like Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, etc., would not remain that popular anymore. Secondly, if tennis disappeared, makers of tennis rackets and balls may start producing huh? goods for other sports. Mm. Thirdly, if tennis disappeared, Wimbledon, the oldest and most prestigious tennis tournament, may make way for other sports. Mm. Fourthly, playing tennis is a good workout for the entire body. If tennis disappeared, fitness level of players may go down. Mm. Fifthly, tennis champions receive a huge amount of prize money. If tennis disappeared, huh? they may have to lower their expenses. Hmm. Lastly, if tennis disappeared, popularity of table tennis may skyrocket. Hmm. What if golf disappeared? Oh no! I was getting better at golf. Oh, I'm some. <laughs> Firstly, golf is often referred to as a rich person's sport. If golf disappeared, rich guys may be one sad lot. Secondly, golf champions receive a huge amount of prize money. If golf disappeared, they may have to lower their expenses. Thirdly, if golf disappeared, famous golf celebrities may have to start learning a new sport. Fifthly, Golf courses are large and occupy a huge amount of real estate. Hmm. If golf huh? disappeared, real estate agents will be one happy lot. Hmm. Lastly, 45% of golf courses in the world are located in USA. If golf disappeared, huh? entire country may go on strike. Hmm. What if football disappeared? Oh no! I was sure of winning the World Cup this time. Oh, I'm so. <laughs> Firstly, if football disappeared, other sports like hockey, cricket, tennis may become more popular. Secondly, regularly playing football is considered a good form of exercise. If football disappeared, huh? many players may start putting on weight. Mm. Thirdly, more than half of the world population watched the FIFA World Cup 2018. If football disappeared, huh? Many people may abandon their TV sets. Mm. Fourthly, if football disappeared, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, football's biggest superstars, may not remain that popular anymore. Mm. Fifthly, football is a national passion in Brazil. If football disappeared, huh? entire country may go on a strike. Lastly, if football disappeared, huh? sale of sports shoes may plummet. Mm. Is rubbing your eyes good or bad? Hmm. Good. No bad. Um, maybe both. Oh, um, some. We usually rub our eyes due to lack of sleep or to remove <gasps> dust, irritants, etc. Now, sometimes rubbing our eyes for brief periods can be good because it activates the release of tears which lubricate our eyes. Rubbing even stimulates the vagus nerve which in turn slows down our heartbeat, helping relieve stress. However, don't make it a habit. Firstly, continuous rubbing can cause the outer layer of our eyes called cornea to get thin, weak, and conical in shape causing a disease known as keratoconus, uh -huh. thus leading to distorted vision. Oh. Ah. Secondly, hmm. if there is an irritant and we try to remove it by rubbing, that irritant can end up scratching our cornea. Lastly, if people with glaucoma rub their eyes, it can lead to extra increase in fluid pressure, further damaging the optic nerve, eventually leading to blindness. Hmm. Why do we get an eye sty? Huh? Cause you don't wear cool shades. <laughs> no. Eye sty or hordeolum is a painful pimple-like bump huh? near our eyelids. It is caused due to Staphylococcus bacterium which lives harmlessly <laughs> on our skin. 
Now, our eyelids contain three glands called gland of Zeiss, gland of Moe, and meibomian gland. Gland of Zeiss secretes an oily substance to lubricate our eyelashes. Gland of Moe is a sweat gland. While meibomian gland prevents ah. the evaporation of our eye's tear film. Now, sometimes huh? in the above glands, dead skin cells and bacteria get trapped, leading to an infection, thus giving rise to a sty. Now, if infection occurs in the glands of Zeiss or Moe, it is called an external sty. However, if the infection occurs in meibomian gland, it is called an internal sty. Also, huh? as an internal sty presses Whoa. against our eye, it proves to be more painful than an external sty. Hmm. What is the science behind acupressure? It's not science, dude. It's geography. Nah. <laughs> acupressure emerged from traditional Chinese medicine theory. The theory states that there are about 12 major meridians or channels in our body. Vital energy or life force called qi flows through these channels. Oh! And a block in the flow leads to discomfort, pain, or diseases. Hence, to release the blockages, practitioners apply pressure on specific acupoints present along the channels to promote healing. Although it is not proved yet, experts say that acupressure does reduce pain. How? When we eat painkillers, they stimulate specific pathways in the brain, helping reduce the pain. Ah. According to experts, the force on acupoints does the same. Ah. In addition to this, a study on rats showed that acupressure actually reduced the activity in their brain stress pathways. So, in humans, it might work in a similar manner. However, many other experts think that it is just a placebo effect. <laughs> What if we planted a trillion trees? I will eat a billion burgers! Oh, um some. <laughs> there are about three trillion trees on Earth right now, so planting a trillion trees would increase that number by 33%. The impact will ah. definitely be positive for Earth as well as all the living things. Hmm. But this will not immediately solve the climate change problem. Firstly, freeing up so much land for planting trees seems like a mammoth task. Secondly, these trees would take a number of years to grow big enough to make any meaningful contribution towards reducing carbon dioxide from air. Thirdly, if we do nothing about emissions and keep on adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, then by the time trees grow, we would have added more than one trillion tons of carbon dioxide, thus nullifying the effects of these trees. So. Plantation of trees plus cut in emissions are the need of the hour. Hmm. Why doesn't ah. Earth have rings like Saturn? Cause Earth is not engaged. Nah. Hmm? First, let's see what are the rings of Saturn made of. They can be remnants of a moon, comet, etc. that got ripped apart due to Saturn's gravitational pull, or result of a large collision between two moons. Some even claim that rings are made up of debris left over during the formation of our solar system. So, how did this debris form Saturn's rings? It's got to do with the Roche limit. It is the distance at which objects tend to be ripped apart by the planet's gravitational pull. Hmm. Now, in case of Saturn, it is popularly believed that a celestial body like Moon or Comet got too close to it and exceeded the Roche limit. Hence, it got ripped apart into pieces thus forming its rings. Now, Earth also has a moon, but since it is beyond the Roche limit, it doesn't get ripped apart into pieces to form rings. Hmm. Why is landing on Mars so difficult? Cause trespassing is prohibited on Mars. Oh, listen. Huh? Before Mars, we successfully landed on Earth and Moon. Earth has a thick atmosphere, so, the advantage in this case is that we can use parachutes oh. to slow down the spacecraft. While, the disadvantage is that the thick atmosphere creates frictional heating, thus requiring heat shields. Now, ah. as the moon has no oh. atmosphere, the disadvantage ah. is that parachutes don't work. Hence, we need oh. complex retro rockets. But, the advantage is that no atmosphere means no friction, so no need of heat oh. shields. Ah. 
Now, more than 50% of landings on Mars have failed because we face both the above disadvantages here. Why? Because Mars' atmosphere is 100 times thinner than Earth's atmosphere. So, parachutes are ineffective. Hence, we need complex retro rockets. Also, as the atmosphere is not completely absent, we need heat shields. As a result, the complexity of landing on Mars increases. What if we only oh. eat fruits? No problemo. You eat all the fruits, I will eat all the burgers. Oh, um some. Huh? <laughs> fruits are a major source of potassium, dietary fiber, vitamin C, and folate. Potassium helps in maintaining healthy blood pressure, ah. thus reducing chances of a stroke. Dietary fiber helps in relieving constipation and reducing blood <laughs> cholesterol levels, thus lowering the risk of heart diseases. Vitamin C is responsible for the growth and repair of body tissues. Folate is vital in the formation of red blood cells. Now, on the flip side, as fruits contain high sugar content, they may prove to be harmful to <laughs> diabetic patients. Also, eating a lot of them may lead to weight gain and tooth decay. Lastly. Relying only on fruits may lead to nutritional deficiencies, which may further lead to immune system dysfunction. Hmm. Why is it difficult to huh? lose belly fat? Because it has been glued using a strong adhesive. Uh -huh. Nah. <laughs> when we exercise, our body produces two huh? hormones called adrenaline and noradrenaline. These hormones attach to specific receptors present on fat cells and help break down the fat. Now, our fat cells have two types of receptors, alpha and beta. Beta receptors are believed to stimulate the hormones further and accelerate the process of fat breakdown. Hmm. However, alpha receptors don't respond that well, causing the fat to break down slowly. Hmm. Hence, the ratio of the two receptors determines the rate at which the fat will break down. Now, as the fat cells mm -hmm. of our face, chest, mm -hmm. arms, etc. have more beta receptors than alpha, the fat breakdown is faster and easier. However, as the fat huh? cells of our belly, uh -huh. hips, thighs, etc. have more alpha receptors than beta, the fat breakdown is comparatively slower and harder. Hmm. What is insomnia? An indoor video game! Nah. Insomnia is a sleep disorder in which individuals find it difficult to fall asleep or stay asleep at night. Oh. Now, let's see some of the causes of insomnia. Mm. Firstly, disruption of our circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is our body's internal oh. clock which regulates our sleep-wake cycle. Ah. However, rotating job shifts or traveling through multiple time zones can disrupt our circadian rhythm, thus causing insomnia. Secondly, Restless Leg Syndrome It is a condition in which we feel unpleasant sensations in our legs and an irresistible urge to move them. This can also keep us from falling asleep. Thirdly, Sleep Apnea It is a disorder in which breathing is repeatedly interrupted during sleep. This can occur when tissues in the back of our throat collapse, blocking the breathing passage, or when brain doesn't send proper signals to muscles that control breathing. Both of these issues can disturb our sleep thus causing insomnia. What if we burn all the fossil fuels? Then I will eat all the burgers in the world. Oh, I'm um, some. Fossil fuel is a natural fuel such as coal, oil, or natural gas, which has formed over millions of years from the anaerobic decomposition of dead organisms. Now, if we were to burn all the fossil fuels in the world, then more than 5 trillion tons of greenhouse gases, mostly carbon dioxide, would be released in the atmosphere. This would lead to greenhouse gas levels not seen in more than 400 million years. As a result, huh? global temperatures would increase by more than 10 degrees oh. Celsius. All the ice on Earth would melt, increasing sea levels by more than 100 hmm. feet, thus submerging all the coastal cities of the world. Lastly, rainfalls would be highly unpredictable. Some areas would receive extreme rainfall, while others would receive very less. Hmm. Why is it hard to hmm? cure common cold? Because common cold wears an invisibility cloak. <laughs> no. Huh? Firstly, there are more than 200 viruses which cause common cold. 
Now, developing 200 vaccines huh? for 200 viruses is impractical. Hmm. Secondly, developing a single <laughs> vaccine for all 200 viruses is proving to be hmm? complex, time-consuming, and expensive as a lot of R&D is required. Hmm. Thirdly, we can't make antivirals to kill viruses, just like we make antibiotics to kill bacteria. Why? Because antibiotics attack the bacteria's protective cell walls. But as viruses don't have any cell wall, antivirals will be useless. However, there might be some good news. Ah. Now, a virus survives in a human body by hijacking a protein found in human cells. Researchers have developed a compound which inhibits the virus from doing so. But as the compound targets human oh. cells, more research is needed to test its safety. Hmm. 